All right, y'all. Um, join you with some uh, tough news. If you're a Georgia fan, uh, as Vince Dooley has passed away today at the age of 90 on uh, October 28th, 2022, day before the uh, Georgia-Florida game. Uh, Jake Rowe, you're down in Jacksonville. And uh, not too formal here. Um, we, we heard that maybe Coach wasn't doing the best earlier this week. Um, but I uh, just want to take a moment, you know, to get your thoughts and maybe just tell some quick stories, some quick thoughts about a guy that meant a lot to Georgia, obviously, as a coach, but as an athletic director and uh, meant a lot to Athens as well. You know, I, I don't have a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, personal stories with Coach Dooley, but I do remember years ago, it was probably 2015, 2016, talking to a colleague and being like, Man, you know, I've never seen anybody try to talk to Ben Stooley that he didn't also, you know, kind of return fire there, that he didn't also try to talk with them. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the, I guess if I did have a story, it would have been um, – it would have been, you know, when Mark Rick was, uh, was let go. And I remember we were all standing around him, and he was getting peppered with all these questions and – none of them really talked about Mark Rick. And then all of a sudden he just kind of pipes up and he says, I thought this was the Mark Rick press conference, <laughs> you know? And uh, <laughs> it was, it was about as kind of, uh, it was about as, Hey, get in line as you ever got from coach Dooley, I guess, kind of in his older years, but you know, 90 years, incredible life, um, you know, incredible love story there with his wife, 62 years, I believe they were married or somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe longer. Uh, great kids, successful kids, uh, and uh, countless lives um, impacted. So good on Coach. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, that him and Larry are, are sharing a handshake somewhere up there right now. So um, I, I didn't have a ton of run-ins with Coach, uh, you know, while he was – really carving the the last years of his legacy as a you know servant to Georgia as an AD saw him at a couple games you know when I was a kid but uh when I was working in local news in Macon in Atlanta and when I was in college at Georgia you know there was every once in a while a story where we would cross paths and you know, he was always just so gracious with his time and you could tell how much he loved Georgia, how much he loved Athens. Uh, you know, he was just such a Renaissance man. That's what I always remember about him. He was a scholar, you know, he wrote yeah. history books about the civil war, uh, obviously really got into the horticulture business as he called it. Yeah. Uh, when I spoke with him, and uh, I went over and did a story at his home right before they named the field after him, Dooley Field, which everyone had wanted to happen for a long, long time. And, you know, the story was what it was. There are a few cameras around and, you know, he gave us his quotes about what it meant to be a, a dog and all of that. But I spent the most time talking to him about his plants and yeah. my wife has a green thumb and I just remember picking his brain about all these plants that he had in his garden and how many different varieties. I mean, he had flowers that were named after him by scientists because he devoted so much time to it. So, I mean, the football field is obviously where Vince Dooley became Vince Dooley and no one will forget that. But in his later years, uh, especially in that 2017 season, I'll always remember how much he still cherished, you know, every opportunity he had to go to a game. Um, I saw him on the field after the 2017 SEC championship game when Georgia played against his alma mater, Auburn. And I just asked him for a quick quote. You know, most of the time you have to wait for press conferences to get access to people like Coach Dooley and players and, and everything like that. But after a game like the SEC championship, it's kind of get what you can get. And Coach Dooley just happened to be the first person I saw with a microphone and camera. And I said, Coach, what do you think about this win? And he kept it short and sweet. I could tell he didn't want the moment to be about 
him, just like you mentioned in that Mark Rick press conference. But I'll always remember he just took a moment, kind of gathered his thoughts and said, it always feels good to be a champion. And it, that summed up what he felt about Georgia and how much he uh, appreciated SEC championships as well. Yeah, you know, Wes, you know, sitting there listening to you talk about him and talking about him myself, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, if you're a young man, you would you'd feel like you'd done well to kind of be like him, to to have kind of lived life like he did and accomplished what he did, not necessarily from the championship perspective, but to be the kind of man that could just kind of figure it out on the fly. You know, Vince Dooley seemed like the kind of guy, and I'm sure he had, I'm sure what made him a legendary head coach is he had great plans. But he was also just the kind of guy that I feel like you could always – you could maybe catch him off guard and you still were going to get something, you know, pithy or something quick or, you know, and, and, and hearing you talk about that, I mean, it just – and that, that's the epitome of it, you know, just the ability to I, – I can't tell you, man, I've seen – I've sat there in the press box, you know, right there eating lunch or whatever, watched him come in and watched a dozen people come up and hit him up in the first three minutes – and he's got something to say to all of them and, you know, made them all feel like you knew them, you know, and that's just, I don't know. That's the, they don't make them like that. You know, they don't, I mean, they make them like that, but they don't, uh, they don't grow them on trees. They don't, they don't just, you know, they're not easy to come by. Um, but, but Vince Dooley was one of a kind special man. And, uh, you know, I, I know that, I know that, uh, I, I know that this is one of those things that's like, you know, it's, it's sad, but, I think it's also just a chance to celebrate. You know, I think it's also a chance to kind of, and I'm sure that he's the kind of guy that would want that, is the kind of guy that would be, hey, you know, let's let's talk about the good. Let's talk about what what great happened. And a lot of great happened, especially in this game they're going to play tomorrow. 18-6-1, dominated it. Uh, you know, kind of took – Georgia had which was struggling in the 60s whenever he took over, struggling in this rivalry. And then he steps up, and uh, they they split the first six, and it was Katie bar the door from there. He uh, he he obviously came from Auburn, which Georgia and Auburn have that kind of weird cousin relationship. Uh, but he came to Georgia and made it his own, and really seemed to just take pride in having, you know, similar to Kirby, and I don't know if Kirby intentionally does this or not, but he had his thumb on what the identity of his teams were, whether they were full of leaders or they were, were full of uh, tough, tough guys. I mean, he, he would describe his teams with attributes that you might describe, you know, your family or your kids. He just knew them and just had that sense about him and obviously had so much to do with, the growing of Georgia uh, from an athletic department standpoint outside of football too, um, that you, you just, you can't replace, you can't replace the years, the blood, uh, the sweat that he put into a program that he, he didn't go to school at Georgia. You know, you might expect that from somebody who did and you see that from coach smart right now. Um, but I'm trying to find the photo of, of their, embrace on the field after the national championship we've got some comments here uh tomahawk 238 rest in peace coach a great man he'll be missed by so many um uncle glenn hartley brings up that memory as well uh when kirby was talking to Dooley after winning the national championship and i think you're right i think that the opportunity is something to celebrate to look back on his career look back on what he did uh look back on just how fortuitous it was in that national championship weekend. Uh, Kirby didn't know if he was going to see him or not. And he just happens to see him in the hotel because he got locked out of his room, if I remember correctly. And, and Kirby viewed that as like a good omen, you know, and just so many of those moments from that season, but also in, in coach Dooley's career that I think just stand out as, uh, as being special. It wasn't just X's and O's. He kind of was the spirit of Georgia athletics. I'm over here trying to talk with my mind muted like I, like I do so often. And a family man, Wes. Uh, I, I will say that, you know, as I was listening to you talk, I did think of one story. Uh, back in the day, I went to vent, uh, uh, Jim Don in football camp. Um, and uh, 
the guys in the room next door to me um, were a couple of guys that, that had connections to the University of Georgia. Uh, and one of them was Vince Dooley's grandson. I believe his name was Patrick, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I ran into Coach Dooley early on in my career. And uh, I guess I was just kind of brash enough in my 20s to just kind of be like, hey, Coach, uh, I don't know if you uh, – um, you know, I know this is probably no interest to you, but, uh, you know, I remember going to football camp with your grandson as a kid. He goes, oh, which one? You know, just real quick. And I said, Patrick. And he just kind of lit up. Like he, he wanted to talk about his grandkids. And he wanted to talk about it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it was Patrick. And, uh, um, yeah, he just, he just wanted to talk about him and tell me what he was doing and, and uh, what he was up to. And, uh, you know, family man, you know, like you said, a renaissance man. I mean, dude, I mean, you're, you're talking about a historian. A, a, a gardener, a, an avid gardener, a, a legendary head football coach, um, a great athletic director, and a family man. I mean, come on. I mean, you want to start checking boxes, accomplishments. I got a long, long way to go, man. Hmm. I got a long, long way to go. Now, listen, I got, I got until 90 maybe to get there. I hope so. But, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, and that's – some time, but he, he was uh, – and, and that's probably only a fraction of it, too. I mean, God knows what else he was able to accomplish that we just don't realize. I mean, he's the member of two of, – of sports hall of fames in two states, Georgia and Alabama. Um, he's – you know, he's won so many different awards and done so many different things and been a part of so many different people's lives and, you know, has, has given us things to talk about regarding him without us ever really having a personal relationship with him. What a guy. You know, that's just – that's not easy to do. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'll we'll have a lot more work to do. We'll speak with a lot more people uh, who can tell better stories about coach than yeah. we can. But uh, as kind of the, the gatekeepers and uh, people who run this particular media outlet um, and a couple stories ourselves, uh, just wanted to uh, take to the air, I guess, yeah. and, uh, and and pay our respects and give all the dogs fans out there an opportunity to do that as well. So I think we can wrap this up right now, Jake, obviously Georgia, Florida takes on a slightly more emotional tone. I think for a lot of those players that got to know him, I don't know how many of them did, uh, but they, they do know who coach Dooley is. They play on a field that's named after him and see his statue when they drive up to the butts mirror building. So uh, he's left a, a literal, legacy with his name and with his presence on Georgia's campus as well. So um, I know you've already written a few words on him. I'm sure I'll uh, put a little something together myself tonight as well um, just to uh, to look back on what he's done and what he's meant. But uh, y'all uh, enjoy this weekend. I think as Jake said, the tone is – it's appropriate to respect what he did and remember what he did and and uh, and remember him as much as – it is a painful loss for Athens and, and for Georgia's program. Uh, one last comment here. Whenever I think about Georgia football, two voices instantly come to mind, Vince and Larry. I'm sure they're catching up as we speak. I'm sure they have a lot to talk about, no doubt. Uh, thanks, Jake. I'll catch you again tomorrow as we talk more about the game. But I uh, appreciate you hopping on for a few minutes here, and stay safe in Jacksonville. All right, buddy. Take care. Yep. Yeah.